guys, welcome back to my channel. I have a special guest today, Connell. If you've seen some of my other videos, he has joined me before, and we're social distancing, so we I'm are, like, yeah. I'm I trying just, to... said, just can't get rid of me. I'm <laughs> back again. So my name is Connell. I'm a wildlife conservationist and uh, environmental educator here uh, in Victoria on Vancouver Island. My work mostly focuses on uh, orcas and migratory birds as well, so we do a bit of bird banding or ringing if you're from the UK. Um, I'm originally from the UK, moved to Canada a few years ago, and I also do some presenting on CBC and BBC Earth as well. Very yeah. fancy. You, you may have seen him in Hello Spring. There you go, <laughs> Hello Spring. If you haven't seen Hello Spring, you should. That kind of brings me into the topic that we're going to talk about. So, I am from the US, if you don't already know. He's from the UK, and we're, we meet here today in Canada. <laughs> this is coming between worlds to talk about our university <laughs> experiences. I wanted to talk a bit for folks that are either in the US, Canada, or the UK about what it's like to go to school for wildlife biology, and in my case, ecology. So let's talk about high school and preparing to go into university and what it was like for the both of us. So maybe I'll start with you and hear like what it was like applying to schools in the UK. Yeah. I literally have no idea how it works there. Okay. So I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know very much, even though I've lived in Canada for a while now, I don't know that much about the Canadian US system. So um, yeah, if you're from there, bear with me. But the UK system is in my mind quite simple, but you might, well judge that. Yeah. <laughs> you do at 16 your exams called your GCSEs. They follow on to two more years studying your A-levels, which you do at 18. So I'm literally a. already confused. <laughs> okay, so GCSE exams are when you're 16. Okay. You pass those, you do a good job, you go on to something called your A-levels. So that is uh, year 12 and year 13. A-levels, you then choose what modules or what topics you're going to take. You will then use those topics to decide what you want to do at university and that is uh, probably the most crucial part of getting into school in the UK. Most universities they require you to get a certain level, uh, a certain grade and the grades equal to points. So, okay. No, I mean that's much? like GPA. Okay. I think. Like your GPA is kind of like points. All right. From grades. Uh, an A star would be worth say 100 points. Okay. And A would be worth 50 points, a B would be worth, you know, it's so So like on. an A star is like an A plus. Yeah, an A plus, yeah. yeah. Okay. A star, you know, you're a star. Yes. Uh, okay, fine. We have something called UCAS points, which are the points that gets you into university. So okay. each course you need to get a certain number of points to get on that course. And they also might have another requirement about what you take. So if you're doing your A-levels, say we're doing our A-levels right now, and you are interested in the environmental field, and you think, all right, what do I want to do? How do I want to study it? What courses do I want to take? My best advice is to pick a science subject, number one. Usually biology, but you should check what courses maybe you want to do. You don't have to know exactly, but just have a look at universities and see what the UCAS points are, how much you need, and also what their requirements are. So if they're like, oh, we need 350 points and a biology A level and you took chemistry mm -hmm. and only chemistry, you might have some problems down, down the road. Oh, okay. um, so for me personally, I knew that I wanted to study wildlife of some kind and the environmental kind of sciences. So I chose chemistry, biology, statistics and geography. Okay, and then I ended up with uh, statistics, biology and geography. So I went around and I looked at what university degrees I wanted to do. You kind of have to have a few in mind, you know, you choose some and uh, you have your choices, but it's not like an official thing. But I feel like the American system, whenever I've seen it on movies, it's like you rank them and they're like, oh, you got into your first choice uh, college or something. Yeah, but maybe that's not of. quite true. But yeah. in the UK, you get your results and you go, all right, I got this number of points, that's enough to get me into this course, this course, and this course, and, oh. or this degree, this degree, this degree. And they degree. say how many points that you need yeah, to get and into that. Yeah, what, that you, what you might need. So you apply for university, Yeah. they come back to you with an offer, and they'll say, if you get this number of points, and which means you get this grades, and a biology at your A-levels, yeah. you will get onto this course. So you apply before you take the A-level. You apply in grade 13, at the beginning of grade okay. 13. So you have an That's idea so of what you're gonna do and what you're gonna yeah. get then. Like I said, you get these offers in, 
and they might say, you're an exceptional student, you are amazing, we're gonna give you an offer with absolutely no conditions. And you got just, that one, right? Just pass it, <laughs> exactly, yeah. So just pass the thing, we'll welcome you in. Most of the time though, they give you what they would give to everyone else. So they say, we think you're great, you're gonna fit onto this course, here's what we require from you, and once you've done that, that's it. And you, then you're in. You're in. Well, that's so different <laughs> because that's so based on like um, just those specific grades. So that exam must be really important. Yeah. Stressful. <laughs> it's very stressful. I personally found A-levels much harder than the actual university process. Wow. So if you're in your A-levels right now, like it's trick it's difficult yeah it's a lot of pressure it's really difficult but I would say don't panic because a lot of the time universities will have some leeway mm. which is another thing I opened my results mm -hmm. and I did okay but it was just okay yeah I didn't get the number of points to get into the one that I wanted to go to okay I rang them up and said I missed out by I it was something small it was like 20 oh, points no. and I said I've missed out by 20 points can you help me out? Yeah. And they said, BSC Wildlife Conservation at Nottingham Trent University doesn't have that many students. Oh. So in general, like okay. we have space for you. Nice. You're on, don't worry about oh, it. Oh, cool. So that was fine. So yeah, there's, there's always options. There's definitely flexibility. So I, I would say that with COVID and everything, it's really tricky at the minute. But just in general, don't panic if you just miss out because there is definitely flexibilities from the universities from my experience the environmental courses depending on what you want to do if you want to do environmental science if you want to do wildlife conservation if you're doing biology how competitive they are really varies course to course okay we'll let the seaplane take off so i think the most like interesting thing was that um you guys like that whole a levels thing and like how much is focused on that because so in the u.s I had a bit of a different experience, but I'll first go with what people normally do is like your GPA is like everything yeah. and your GPA is your grade point average and it's made up of how you do in high school courses basically. So if you get A, B, C, D in high school and it's like the number one judge of like getting into school, you do have SATs in the US, which is like, I feel like everyone knows it from like Yeah, movies. yeah, yeah. I was <laughs> just thinking that. On I, was SAT. thinking, I know what my S <laughs> SATs are from TV. I'm starting to learn they're less important than like grade point average, like than people think. Like uh -huh. people think the SATs are like really important, but your GPA is more important. Um, and then there's ACTs, which is another exam that's like SATs. Um, that some schools they take ACTs but it all goes into your application package so they only judge it as like one part but they use the GPA to um, have a minimum GPA of like if you don't get at least like a 2.0 like don't even apply so sometimes they set minimum GPAs right. the most you can get is a 4.0 GPA but wow. that's not true now they have like advanced placement courses which are AP courses which are college courses or university courses you can take in high school <gasps> and that makes your GPA go even higher. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. Who's got the time? I know. It's good and it's bad because it's it's hard, but also you you get to like reduce your classes you have to take in college so they're cheaper. Oh. So I finished in 4 years when a lot of other people didn't because I took like 5 of these like AP courses, mm. like college courses. So you have your application package. It has your GPA in it, how you did in high school. It has your SAT score, um your ACT score if if that's required. Extracurriculars. I feel like yes. no, maybe you're big. That's something that is is uh required and you usually have to at least when i applied for university you would have to send in a cover letter yeah it's not as big i guess it would probably be big on a competitive really competitive course but at that time the one that i was doing was not as competitive so but i think they needed to see that you were interested in wildlife and the environment so yeah so i did a lot of extracurricular stuff while oh, I was okay in so you had to yeah. do that stuff too yeah extracurriculars can be hard for people who are working and like trying to support themselves too and that university is just becoming so competitive in the u.s like i graduated with like a 4.3 gpa meaning i got like straight a's and i did extracurriculars in high school and if, i mean i applied to like uc berkeley ucla ucsd all the like big california schools and i actually didn't get into any schools <laughs> so now we're going to talk about community college so i didn't get into any universities but generally if you got into university you would go right to your four-year school go to your campus 
do your university. You typically apply to right. a program with, and you know the major. Like you'll apply to like an ecology program, a biology program, zoology. You get into that zoology major and then that's it. So you have to choose what you want to major in, similar to, sounds like yes. that program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you have to choose what what uh, course, what degree you want you want to do. Yeah. We, I think some universities have majors and minors, but it's not common. It's not the it's, same, yeah. it's pretty much that you go to that that school, you look at what the degree is and you take that degree. In the US, we have options in some communities where it's like a local school. So it's kind of a stepping stone between high school and college university, like a four year program where you can actually like do really well in these community college classes. And then you can transfer after two years to do um, your, the re your final two years at like, you know, the big university. And that's good in some ways because the first two years of your bachelor's degree are usually general education courses. So it's like math, calculus, um, statistics. Yeah. So it it kind of doesn't matter if you do it at this school you're paying $10,000 a year to go to or a school, a community college you're paying $300 a year to go Whoa. to. Whoa. Yeah, so it's like dirt cheap and California's actually made it free. So it's a I mean, really good, great. yeah, it's it, a really good option. Whoa, that's a great option. Yeah, so that's what I did. Yeah, that was a really good experience for me because it let me figure out what I wanted to do without spending like tens of thousands of dollars. <laughs> but I, I did notice there's a lot of um, stigma in high school. That's what I was gonna ask you about. Is, yeah. Because I feel as though even from shows, from yeah. the very little pop culture things. From community. It's, <laughs> it, you know, they're like, oh, you went to a community yeah. college or something, which, yeah. There's totally a stigma against it and like uh, you know in high school in the in America you have these like guidance counselors that help you choose a degree program and they're like you're too good for community college you can do a four year and they, it's just all this like toxic thinking yeah, yeah. like when my degree says University of California San Diego and like you know that's it you know it doesn't say but she did the first two years in community college and I saved like thirty thousand dollars you know yeah exactly and then you move to a place like canada or you could go to the europe and no one would even know what that means yeah, exactly. so it doesn't even matter yeah. <laughs> you know so if you're a community college don't worry or feel bad about it it's a great option so a big thing that i noticed that was a difference that you said the first two years are general courses yeah so i'm always blown away by how much freedom you have to mm. pick your courses and how you will meet people out here who kind of go oh I don't really know what I'm majoring in yet, or I don't really know what, I know generally what I'm studying, but I maybe will pick up this course and this course. Yeah. Because in England, we don't have that at all. You, right, I was looking earlier today, yeah. that you are told what you're going to be studying in the first year, the second year, and the third year. You might have a few optional modules here and there, um, but generally you are told you're doing anatomy and physiology, you're doing ecology, you're doing environmental uh, technology, and you're doing GIS. Yeah. That's your first year. So like, yeah, we call them like electives. Um, and I don't know if every school does this, but I think it's pretty common to have electives. And so if you're in the UK and you're wondering what that is, basically when you do have set courses you have to take, mm -hmm. but even in my school, they give me a list of like, okay, you have to take five ecology classes. Here are 10 to choose from. Right. And so some of them are like coral reef ecology, um, oh. you know, uh, marine mammal ecology. And so you actually get to like choose out of that list what you're the most interested in but there are like some basic courses you have to take like you know the calculus and some of those like um, statistic classes mm -hmm. but then they give you a lot of freedom to like choose your classes so an example is like I actually majored in ecology but I was really interested in marine biology but right. I didn't want to pick marine biology as a major because I didn't know if that would look good on my resume so I ended up just doing my ecology degree and every time they gave me an option to take a marine class <sighs> I picked it, so I yeah. so I know a ton about marine biology, even though my major is ecology. So you get a really varied um, amount of classes based on like what you are interested in, and I actually really like that, um, having that freedom rather than just kind of being told what class you know you're supposed to take, and then you make it yours. You know what you're interested in. Yeah, I I agree. I think that I think there's a happy medium because I I find the idea of having to pick every time. I think oh, that <laughs> sounds really overwhelming. Like when you actually come away from that you just kind of think it's normal that you just get all the stuff, all the courses put out for you. Yeah. And then finding out that you guys have such a choice, I'm like, oh, I do wish I had a bit more of a choice. 
I don't know if this is exactly the same now, but when I was at university and I couldn't remember the exact percentages, which is embarrassing because I wasn't at university that long ago. Um, what year were, which year did you graduate? What year? 2013. Okay, I graduated 2014. Yeah, so, so I yeah. mean, it's a little while, but like I'm not 20 years out or anything. Yeah. <laughs> the first year doesn't count towards your degree. What? You have to pass, but the first year doesn't count. Like so GPA my, wise? Or? GPA grade wise doesn't yeah. count. So you have first year, 0%, second year was uh, 20%, third year was 80%. Oh my god, I would have loved that yeah, so, so much more than what we had. So first year is, that's a real, you just pass the thing and you kind of, but you have time to settle into the program to understand what you want to do. You learn stuff, you really just have a chance to settle down. You have to pass. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not a free year, like you're not get out of jail free kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you, you have to pass the course to carry on but it doesn't count. By the third year, 80%, it meant that you could really go, all right, I know what I want now. Like mm. I, I'm a bit old, I'm more settled, I'm out away from home for longer. It meant that I could kind of really work hard in my final year because I'd been okay in the second, the first two years. But the final year I was like, nope, I'm gonna buckle down, I'm gonna get this done. And it just meant that I could like, raise the, my grade higher than it was possibly gonna get. That's a really good system. Cause I, th I found like the first year I was totally lost and mm -hmm. I have a video where I talk all about like the crazy stuff that I was dealing, like I was just dealing with like a lot the first two years. Like I was working pretty much full time, like mm -hmm. trying to support myself and like I was in a bad relationship and I was like going through all this like life stuff, just that transition from high school to college. And I found like, I actually, think I didn't get into my master's programs because I didn't do well like those first two years and it brought like my whole GPA down and then I just like my GPA was too low and I couldn't get into any graduate programs but my last two years I did so well yeah so you, know? you would have been fine in English yeah. school you would have been absolutely well, fine should have done that <laughs> you uh, yeah your first year is that kind of it. I feel like at the end of the first year if you haven't done that well and I did okay I, I did okay yeah. um, but I still felt like it was a nice kick up the backside to go yeah. all right I gotta actually do this now. Uh, our final year is a, mostly based around a dissertation. That's the big. I that's did have the to do that, thing. but you not everyone has to do that in the U.S. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we have to do a dissertation, and that's where you have a big choice. So you can do your dissertation on whatever you want. Um, sometimes your lecturers might have uh, an idea of uh, projects that you could could work with them on. You know. So where I um, where I went to university, uh, it was a rural campus, so we were in the middle of the countryside. They were doing a lot of work on hedgehog. On hedgehog conservation and, and, and tracking hedgehogs. I so, love like, the British wildlife yeah, that you so, guys focus on. We were tracking, there was a lot of tracking of hedgehogs. That's the most British on. like thing uh, ever. I can I know. I just imagine you guys like going on. So they would put little, he little hedgehog trackers and go and track them, and that would be part of the, someone's dissertation. But you could really do it on whatever you wanted. And that's where I think you get a lot mm. of freedom um, to do a project and to actually decide then what aspect maybe you want to do within conservation. We had that too, but I think my program was kind of rare that we had an internship. You had to do an internship. So right. like a co-op um, for the last year, second to last year, you had to do one and it was mandatory. So you had to go find an internship to work at part time. And then you had to write up like a dissertation, a thesis on like what you studied there and create some sort of like project out of it. And then everyone presented it at the end of the year. And I think that was so beneficial. Like if you can find a program that does that, I highly recommend being forced to do it because then it's like you can't get out of it. And that yep. goes on your resume. That like helps you so much having writing samples. I've like used my senior thesis as a writing sample like to get yeah. my first job and it was like so nice and everyone really appreciated it so that was a really positive so we don't really have co-ops in the same way that you guys do and uh co-op is just like a, an internship a job yeah and co-ops even a canadian term because we yeah. call them internships so i go. think i think it's usually i think the difference is like a co-op it's like you actually take time off school to yeah. do it yeah no so co-ops are in lieu of school you you take yeah. three months usually during the spring and the, then the fall yeah and you take that time out and you're working and the school will usually put you in contact with like they'll have contacts for you so it's a really great thing yeah. but I would recommend that so, so much. That was the mm. difference for me. Now in the UK, we don't really call them co-ops. At least my university called them, it called it a sandwich year. And the reason- sandwich? A sandwich year, because it's sandwiched right in the middle okay. of your courses. So I, most courses in the UK are three years. 
I did it for four. Uh -huh. And what that's I did... That's another difference. That's another yeah. difference. Three as opposed to four years. Yeah. Yeah. So we... Uh, first year, second year, and then the third year, sandwich in the middle, mm -hmm. I went away and did my sandwich year before coming back and graduating. What'd you do? I came to Canada. Oh. And that was... Without my sandwich year, I wouldn't be sitting on this bench and I wouldn't have the job that I have now. So... In your sandwich year, you basically get a little bit of support, you still get a student loan, and the university might have some contacts for you, um, they might be able to help you out, but that sandwich year is a massive thing, to be able to get a student loan, and some people work, and you know, you can get paid to do jobs, um, but I found that massively important. The people who did sandwich years all got a job straight out of university. Wow. The ones who chose not to, it was a mixed bag. Most did, and most eventually did, like if you're, if you're past that point, like don't yeah. panic, um, but I would say it's massively beneficial to do a sandwich year or to do an internship, to do a co-op. Just take some time to go out into the world and, and do some working, uh, get some work experience. I happened to do it because I just emailed a bunch of people and someone in Canada said yes. But my back, my next option, I wouldn't even say it was a plan B because I was fine doing like my second plan A, I would mm -hmm. almost call it, was I was going to do stuff with the Leicestershire Wildlife Trust. I was going yeah, to so go... Yeah, you don't have to go No, far. absolutely yeah. not. Uh, the RSPB does long-term volunteering where you get your accommodation paid for. Um, you can just do it from home, do your local wildlife trust. There's lots of places out there that you can, can do it. And I was lucky, you know, I could... I didn't have to work at the same time as doing it, so I could do some things for free. And my options were Canada, which just happened to happen. That was kind of like my see what happens yeah. um, Scotland or uh, just going home and, and working and staying and living at home in my parents house and working with the local wildlife trust yeah there. one of the things I also think about going to university or going to college I don't know if this is the same in the US but I think people ask a lot of questions to me and I'm sure you get a lot as well about what specific course they need to take. yes that's like the most common question I get and so you took ecology yeah I took wildlife conservation we have other friends who took other degrees yeah, Lena did geography. Geography, right? yeah. and she now works within bear conservation. Yeah. My advice is pick the course that best suits you, that's in the general environmental field. If you want to go into the environmental field, that's in a general environmental field that you that best fits you. Yeah. So I chose my course because it was in the best location for me. I felt like it was the best course for me. Honestly, I, I think that that's how, how you should choose it. You should look at it and go, this is great. Because on a lot of job applications that at least I see, and it's the same in the UK, they'll want a, they'll say a biology, geography, environmental mm. science, all related subjects. It's the same here, yeah. I think it's the same in the US. Like, I would say the same. Like, um, I've made a whole video about majors. Um, mm. I'll link to it above there you go. if you guys want to see it. <laughs> if you are so interested in wildlife and you want to spend those four years learning about like all the details of wildlife specifically do wildlife if you can and if it's an affordable option because i'm you know talking to americans so i have to be like don't like do not go like six figures into debt for a degree if you can't avoid it oh, six you know like yeah there are people with six figures of of student loan debt and it's really unfortunate so you got to kind of like balance a little bit of like well is there a pl way you can save money somewhere go to a bit of a in we call them like in-state schools right. um which is like close to home you pay lower costs like significantly lower costs so if you can do that do it but then the specific degree like do what interests you what's that like sounds cool what you're going to be happy doing for four years and for me i picked ecology because i was so interested in all aspects it wasn't just wildlife and when i got into ecology i didn't even actually know i wanted to do wildlife specifically yeah. it took me taking those courses to realize i wanted to do wildlife and having a more general degree like environmental science in ecology has not held me back from wildlife work at all um yeah so pick what it makes you excited and for me having a specific what like my jobs have only been in wildlife because that's what i've just yeah got. see my habits but yeah. i would say that having a wildlife specific degree doesn't stop me from getting in ecology a more broader job afterwards yeah. as well yeah. um i yeah i think people get really hung up on this specific course and they think that if i do environmental science it will be better than wildlife conservation or if it's biology it'll be better than ecology and i'm like it's not really the case like, yeah. do the one that best suits you i totally agree what do you think helped you in school a lot and what do you think like shocked you when you got into the working world that you never learned in school oh do you do you think it was like a pretty smooth transition like do you think your degree like prepared you for the working world pretty well 
In some ways, yes. Yeah. I thought that my degree did help me in in some ways. Like I felt as though I knew enough about wildlife, and I could I could I knew a lot about surveying. Actually, we did a few surveying techniques oh, nice. and stuff. So I had an idea of how we could set up a survey, and that helped me going into my my job. But I do think going into the world of work was still quite jarring, yeah. which is why I was pleased I had the sandwich year because I had that year to kind of oh, l- yeah. get used to it and mess up and still be kind of like the intern and it was fine. Mm-hmm. I did quite a bit in university, but I wish I'd done more like extra stuff. Mm. So for example, there's so many times where I can think of how, and again, I was lucky. I didn't have to work. I like, my student loans covered everything. So it was fine. Some people don't have that. I was thinking about the number of afternoons that I would just sit around doing nothing and I think, oh, I did some volunteering and I did a little bit of bird ringing and I did a little bit here and there, but I wish that I'd done more because when I think when you're a student and you're, and it's not so great with COVID right yeah, now, yeah. but you know, I think that you have a potential to actually like go and, uh, and do more with, with your time, if that makes sense. I think you can be a bit cheekier, you can volunteer in different places, you're not working, you might have a bit more time and I wish I'd done a little bit more of that, like taking some it more opportunities. It sounds like you did so much though. I did a, yeah. I did quite a bit and I, and I was lucky, but, um, and I went to a rural campus as well, so it was yeah. easier for me to do that, like everything was on the doorstep. But yeah, I I wish that I'd gone out and tracked the hedgehogs. Yeah. Because I, I didn't do that, I just knew I that they I were there. That. that sounds fun. <laughs> you know, there was just a few things that I think, oh, that would have been yeah. fun. Uh, or I kind of presumed that these opportunities would just be here when I was in the I working world. I know what you world. mean. Yeah, I know what you mean. I found that too. Yeah, and they're not quite... It, 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 they are a little bit, but you don't have the same kind of safety net as totally. as being on campus as a student. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, I think you can go off and volunteer a little bit more. You can get involved with certain projects. Ask your lecturers, your mm. people for... I don't know what you call them. Professors. Professors. Yeah. <laughs> Ask your professors what they're working on. Have they got any cool projects? Like Yeah, and that's can, that's totally good know. advice for people yeah. in the US too. Do the same thing. Because professors also usually run labs. And I don't know if you guys have like labs or anything like that. Okay, so there's like two, labs mean two different things in the US. They either mean like your lab courses, which means those are like your field courses. Yep. And also, a lab is like a research group. I worked with like a research group my last year as part of my internship. PIs of the lab are the leads of the lab and they are also professors in school. Uh. So um, they have graduate students that work under them. And so if you have a professor, they probably are also doing research. And so then you can ask them like after class and get in on some of the research, even if it's just like a research assistant position um, with a professor, a graduate student, that's like really good yeah, experience. I, I did not, I really like my lecturers and I got on with them and I still kind of have some contact with them today, mm-hmm. but I did not take advantage of the work that they were actually yeah. doing. Yeah, and it, that was really helpful for me was to work with like one of my professors and to get that because then when you're applying for graduate school you need a letter of recommendation and there you go. Shout out to Dr. Curley for uh, giving me Dr. letters Curley. of recommendation. So I guess my last point um, for British people and I, I just remembered this based on you saying oh hedgehogs that's so cool that's so yeah. British about our wildlife but I, I think that it's very easy in the UK to think oh, wildlife isn't that good, or oh, I don't know, I need to go abroad and I need to have this great experience for anyone to take me seriously and whatnot. And that's not the case at all. Like, doing volunteering in your local area, doing something with your dissertation on a British species, like, that will not have any kind of detrimental effect on you getting a job, whether Mm -hmm. you want to get a job abroad or not. Mm -hmm. Like, people in other countries will still look at that and be like, that's really cool, yeah. that's really cool. And also, even in the UK, people will be thrilled that you did it on British wildlife. Yeah, because then you know. Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. or British ecology. Like, don't, I think it's so easy to get hung up on the fact that people are doing their dissertations maybe on elephants or this or mm. that. If your passion is British wildlife or that's what you have access to, yeah. utilize it because honestly, it, it will not have a detrimental impact on you going forward and on your career. If anything, it will it improve it. It will help yeah. you. Um, yeah. I think it's the same. It's the same in the U.S. too. I think you start to see all the all the rich kids and your courses going to Africa to study elephants, and then it's really easy to get hung up on that and be like very jealous. Like this is coming from someone who did their university all in student loans and like working, and I also got quite jealous. And you know, I did get some lucky opportunities that I was able to go mm-hmm. abroad, but 
the vast majority of people do not have those opportunities and I've hired wildlife biologists here and many people don't have those like abroad internships and yeah. it's not that important. It's just about getting that job experience just in general. So hopefully this was interesting yeah. to you guys hearing the differences between the US, UK and even we threw in some Canada. A little bit of Canada. If you guys want to check out Connell you can follow him on Instagram uh, at Connell Bradwell. Yeah there you go. Yeah there you go um, and check him out follow him and uh, if you have any more questions you can ask him or me on Instagram right yeah definitely yeah. any British people have any questions or Americans I yeah. might not be able as useful but yeah definitely feel free to ask thank you guys for tuning in to our little conversation thanks and for having we'll me again see you next time bye, bye.